A common experimental technique in the laboratory, uh, if you're running a reaction that involves the generation of gases, is to, if you need to collect the gas, is to collect it over water. Uh, what we mean by that is we could use a setup sim similar to this. This is a very um, simple diagram of essentially what would be going on. You would run the reaction in the vessel. This might be a metal and hydrochloric acid, for example, and we know that that reaction produces hydrogen gas. The hydrogen gas would bubble up. It would travel through the tube. Um, this is a stoppered container. And then once it gets to the end of the tube, uh, the hydrogen gas then would bubble up into an upside down test tube. We would want to start this test tube completely filled with water and then as the hydrogen gas bubbled up it would displace the water and then we will have collected our hydrogen gas. Uh, you might actually collect this in a graduated cylinder so you could look at the markings on it so that you could tell what volume it was or you could simply be collecting it to use in another experiment. Um, so there are a lot of reasons why you would need to collect the gas. This is just a very simple method of collecting it. But here's the problem. The problem is that when we collect that gas, um, it also has some water vapor in it. Um, all liquids have a vapor pressure. We talked about that in a previous chapter. The vapor pressure is simply the pressure of the vapor over a liquid. Um, it varies with temperature, and so we would now have a mixture of gases. We would have two gases present, our hydrogen gas in, our, in the example I talked about, and our water gas um, in this container. Uh, if we wanted just the pressure of the hydrogen or the volume of the hydrogen, or well, actually the volume of the hydrogen is the entire container, but if we wanted just the pressure of the hydrogen in order to use PV equals NRT with it, then we would need to subtract off the water vapor pressure because recall Dalton's law is that the total pressure in a container is the sum of the partial pressures of each of the gases in the container. So in our example it's whatever our gas is, hydrogen if we're doing hydrogen, plus the pressure of our water vapor. Now this is such a common technique that we have tables of water vapor pressures available to us in our textbook as well as online. It does vary by temperature, so you want to look at a table of water vapor pressures. It will be listed by temperature, so you would conduct your experiment. You would record what temperature you were, uh, your water was at as you were doing this experiment. Then you would look up in the table its vapor pressure, so you would be able to subtract it from your total to get just the pressure of your gas. Uh, again, this is a very common technique and a very direct use of Dalton's Law. Um, as we continue talking about Dalton's Law, let's talk about another formula for uh, partial pressure. If you have a mixture of gases, um, it, it has been determined experimentally that the partial pressure of gas A, whatever it is, is equal to the mole fraction of gas A times the total pressure. This is a simple equation that if you're, you're given enough information to, to, to use this quickly, you can quickly get individual partial pressures if you know a total pressure and you know some information about the moles. This mole fraction, it's the symbol chi, remember that the mole fraction um, is the moles of gas A all over the total moles. It is a, it's like a percentage, only you don't multiply by 100. It is a fraction, so it's the part over the whole. It is unitless, and so your partial pressure is going to have the same uh, units that your total pressure has. So if you're given information to calculate moles of each of the components of the gases, you can quickly calculate the partial pressure of gas A uh, by plugging into this formula.